this chapter, we will be using calculus as a tool in curve sketching. In this lesson, we'll be using the second derivative to analyze a curve's concavity. All right, hi everybody. So we're going to keep talking about curve sketching, and right now we're going to talk about concavity. Okay, and concavity deals with a, the type of curvature um, that a graph will have along a certain interval, okay, of its domain. So you are going to have uh, two types of curvature. It's either going to be concave, okay, which curves up like this, or convex. Okay, or another way of describing this is sometimes people call this concave up, and some people call this concave uh, down. Whatever, doesn't really matter here, as long as you, you understand the difference between them. So, test for concavity. This deals with the second derivative. Okay, so in an interval where the second derivative is greater than zero, okay, so the, the function, the second derivative of a function, if it's positive, if it's positive for all values of x in that interval, then the graph is going to be concave or concave up on that interval i. Now, what that means is, it looks like this, all of its tangent lines are below the function. That's what I've got drawn here. So if you've got a function that goes up like this, notice that the tangent line, okay, the tangent line is always below the function. And that would be true even if this thing curved up over here, okay, start drawing tangent lines to it here, underneath, and down like that. Now, something that I want to take a few moments here to, to discuss here is, so, uh, a curve that has, sorry, a, a function that has this kind of a curvature to it is said to be concave or concave up on that interval. But I want you to notice that if the curve curves like this, okay, this is where the second derivative is positive, but also the first derivative is positive. So just to give you an, a way of differentiating here, okay, so a curve that curves up like that will be an interval where the second derivative is positive and the first derivative is positive because it's increasing and concave up. Whereas this interval right here, this is still where the second derivative is positive, but this one right here has a first derivative that's negative because the function is decreasing even though it's still concave up. Okay, all of the tangent lines are still below it. So this gives you a way, okay, a little bit more information, but it gives you a way of, of differentiating the two different types of curvature that you get when something's concave up. Is it concave up and decreasing or concave up and increasing? Now, if the second derivative, oh, and obviously my, uh, <laughs> I didn't finish the notation here. If the second derivative is less than zero along that interval, then the graph is called convex, okay, or concave down. And what that means is, again, it, the opposite of what we just looked at, all of the tangent lines that you can draw, and I'll carry this over here, all of the tangent lines that you can draw to this curve are going to be above the curve, okay? Whether it's on the increasing interval or the decreasing interval, all the tangent lines are above. And so let's just talk about it like, like that again. So if the curve looks like this, here the second derivative is less than zero, but because it's an increasing function, the first derivative would be greater than zero. And if it looks like this, the second derivative is, again, less than zero because it's concave down. And in this case here, the first derivative would also be negative, okay, because it's a decreasing function. And so again, just a way of helping you get a, a, clear, uh, a clear vision as to the kind of curvature that you're looking at based on the, the derivative and the second derivative of the function. Now, just a little bit more information here. The point in the domain of the function for which the second derivative is zero or undefined is called a point of inflection. Now, that's, that's true for the most part, but there's a little bit more, okay? There's a little bit more to this, this definition of the point of inflection, and you need the rest of this. It marks where the concavity of a function changes signs, and that is really important. Okay, to be a point of inflection means there must be a change in concavity. Okay, so just really quickly to over-exaggerate one, there's concave up, 
there's concave down, there's my point of inflection, right? The concavity must change there. And I've got another diagram here real quick. <coughs> Same sort of thing. And you, you might recognize this graph here as a, as a cubic here. Notice that from this point to the left, the graph is convex, okay, or concave down. From this point to the right, it's concave up. That's the point where the concavity changes, so that's a point of inflection. It is possible, okay, it is possible that you get a point where the second derivative is zero or undefined, and it's not a point of inflection. And we're going to talk more about this in a little while here, but I'll just give you a bit of a heads up right now, just so that you understand how important it is that the concavity change here. If it is possible to have a point where the second derivative is undefined and the concavity doesn't change. I'll give, should just show you a quick example here. Cur curve could go up like this and then drop back down like this. So right at this point right here, let's call that A, where X is equal to A, my second derivative would be undefined. Okay, my second derivative is undefined. It's this sharp little point here. But notice that it's concave up to the left of A. It's concave up to the right of A. So concavity didn't change. In a situation like this, we call this a cusp, okay? Not a point of inflection. Anyway, these sorts of things are going to pop up. I just want you to be aware that there's uh, an issue here and that when we talk about a point of inflection, it's very important that you're looking at a, a uh, a point where the concavity of the curve changes. Okay, now let's take a quick look at an example here. And my question is, uh, it's asking me to identify the intervals of increase and decrease and the intervals of concavity for, for x multiplied by the square root of x squared plus 4. Uh, you know what, we'll, we'll even just give ourselves a, a bit of a sketch after we get that information there. Not that we'll know exactly what it looks like, but we'll have a pretty good idea. So first of all, we've got to start with the derivative, okay? So particularly if all we're being asked to do is in, uh, look at the intervals of increasing, decreasing, the intervals of concavity, th these are, are derivative questions here. So to start off with, my function here, I'm going to rewrite this. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this with a rational exponent so that I can simply apply the, the product rule to this. The derivative of x will be 1 uh, multiplied by x squared plus 4 to the 1 half plus x multiplied by the derivative of the second term here. So 1 half x squared plus 4 to the negative 1 half and then because of the chain rule multiplied by 2x, the derivative of what's inside. Oops, sorry, and that's my derivative. There's my original function, now I've taken the derivative. Okay, now to simplify this, uh, first of all, I'm going to notice that the, the half and the 2 here will cancel. And I am going to factor out the common x squared plus 4 to the negative 1 half, which is going to leave me with, from this first term, x squared plus 4 to the 1. And then out of the second term here, I'm going to be left with an x squared. And so altogether, what I'm getting here is uh, 2x squared plus 4 over the square root of x squared plus 4. Okay? And there's my first, my first derivative here. Now, this is a good time to talk about the intervals of increase and decrease. So let's just take a quick look at this. Well, first of all, notice, okay, that the denominator is x squared plus 4 square rooted. Well, okay, x squared plus 4 is a parabola that opens up, never hits the x-axis. So at no point does the radicand here ever become 0. So when I take the square root, I'm never going to be taking the square root of a negative number or even 0 here. So the denominator will always be positive. Additionally, when I look at the numerator here, Again, it's a parabola that opens up and has been shifted four units up. And so the numerator also never becomes zero or, or is never, never negative. So I've got a positive expression divided by a positive expression. This function is always positive, okay? 
So therefore, the derivative is greater than zero for all x that are an element of the reals. Okay. In other words, this function is increasing on the interval negative infinity to infinity. Okay. It's always increasing and, and strictly increasing. Okay. I might even stay, uh, state here, this is strictly increasing. We never even hit a uh, spot here okay, where the, the, the derivative goes to zero. Okay? So as a result, this is a strictly increasing. Now, let's take a look at the second derivative so that we can investigate uh, the intervals of concavity. Now, eh, this is going to be a little bit more involved just because there's a little bit more going on here. Okay? So I've got my first derivative right there, 2x squared plus 4 over the square root of x squared plus uh, 4. Uh, there you get under the radical there. So let's take a riveter, the derivative of the numerator here. That is going to be 4x multiplied by the denominator, the square root of x squared plus 4. And I'll just leave it as a radical for right now. Uh, minus the numerator, 2x squared plus 4. And now I'm going to treat that radical as if it's a, an exponent. So 1 half x squared plus 4 to the negative 1 half multiplied by the derivative of what's inside because the chain rule all over and this is nice the denominator squared which is just going to turn that into x squared plus 4 which is going to get rid of the radical there which is kind of convenient. Okay so now over here I see that the the half and the 2 will cancel uh, so I'm going to have an x there. I've got an x there. So let's just, we're just going to clean this up just a little bit. This is still 4x. I'll make this x squared plus 4 to the 1 half. Uh, this is going to be minus. Um, there's a common factor of 2 here. So I take that out. 2, there's the x. That leaves me with x squared plus 2 inside there multiplied by x squared plus 4 to the negative 1 half all over x squared plus 4. Okay, now what have we got here? Well, we've got a common factor of 2x for sure and we've got a common factor of x squared plus 4 to the negative 1 half. That is going to leave me with here a 2 multiplied by x squared plus 4 to the 1. Okay, and now remember how that works here, right? I'm, I'm dividing this, this term by this term, but when you're dividing and you've got an exponent there, you've got to subtract the exponents. So 1 half minus negative 1 half puts it up at 1. Okay, and so now here I'm going to subtract and I took that out, I took out all that, basically all I'm left with here is this x squared plus 2. It's still all over x squared plus 4. All right, I'm almost, almost good here. I'm going to move this down into the denominator because I've got the two bases are going to be the same here. And so I'm going to be left with 2x, let's simplify here, I'm going to have 2x squared minus x squared, so x squared and then that's going to be 8 minus 2, it's going to be plus 6 all over. And then this is going to end up being x squared plus 4 all to the 3 halves in the denominator. Okay? Which is, which is awesome here because now what I'm going to do is to investigate the intervals of concavity I need to know where this is positive and where it's negative. And so first of all, I need to know where it's either zero or undefined. But when I look at the denominator here, okay, I notice that the denominator is never going to be uh, zero. X squared plus four will be positive for all values of, of X. So this function is never, uh, never undefined. Okay, well, that's great. Where does it go to zero? Okay, where does it go to zero? 
Well, that's going to be where the numerator goes to zero. So I've already got this in factored form here. So it's either going to go to zero where 2x goes to zero, and that's going to be where x is equal to zero. Okay, maybe I should set the uh, second derivative equal to zero. That's going to occur where x is equal to zero, or where x squared plus six is equal to zero. But just like we did above here, just think about what that is, just that x squared plus six. If we were just to look at this all by itself, that is a parabola that opens up, okay, uh, and has been moved six units up. It doesn't touch the x-axis. So as a result, this right here is the only spot along the curve where the, where the function goes to zero. So now let's just figure out what we, what we got to do with uh, the intervals here. So the only place where it changes here is at zero. So let's take a look at the number line. Zero is where my second derivative goes to zero. So let's take a look. So we've already identified that the denominator here is always going to be positive. This factor here is always going to be positive. So the only factor here that has any influence on the value of the, the second derivative will be the 2x, which will be negative to the left of zero and positive to the right, which means this graph is going to be concave, okay, concave down okay, on the interval, negative infinity up to zero, and I'm going to include that. Okay, it's going to be concave down. Um, I've been pretty consistent with this in the past here. The second derivative, okay, bear in mind the second derivative is negative up to but not including zero. Okay, so I might say it like this. The second derivative is negative uh, from negative infinity up to zero, not including. The second derivative is positive, okay, on the interval zero up to infinity, not including zero. But when we talk about concave and we talk about the, the, the intervals, okay, we need to include those endpoints. So this is going to be concave down on that interval, concave up. Whoops, forgot the end there. Concave up on the interval zero to infinity. And because that zero is the end point of a concave down interval and the beginning point of a concave up interval, we've got a point of inflection at zero comma zero. Okay, now just to finish this off here, let's just take a quick look. What would this look like? Let's take a look at the graph here. So what, I, what I'm going to do here is above this graph, so here's my y, here's my x here. Okay, what I'm going to do, and this is me, by the way, this is just me. This is a, a way that I have kind of started doing this. I'm going to put a number line up top here. This is going to represent what's happening with my first derivative. And with my first derivative, I've discovered that I'm always increasing. Now, down here, okay, I've discovered that my concavity changes at zero. So I'm going to have a number line here, and on this number line, I'm going to identify what the concavity looks like. Now, the concavity over here is negative. And just to help me remember what that looks like, I'm going to put negative, and it's, it's sad, a little sad face. Negative face, sad, right, concave down. Over here, it's positive, concave up, okay? So what does my graph look like? Well, I know it goes through the origin, 0, 0. To the left of 0, it's increasing and concave down. Increasing and concave down means it looks, it's got to look something like this. Now, it's not becoming, it's not leveling out. It's not getting flat. This is not like a peak here because the first derivative didn't go to 0 anywhere. So it's, it's basically just, it's, it's becoming, um, more horizontal, but it never actually reaches horizontal. It gets to this point right here, the concavity changes, but it's still increasing. So the graph is going to look something like this from this point on, increasing and concave up now. That just gives you a basic idea of what that particular function would look like. All right, let's take a look at another example. Find the intervals of increase and decrease and the intervals of concavity for y equals x to the 2 thirds multiplied by 5 plus x. 
All right. Well, once again, first of all, we're going to start with the derivative here. So we've got y equals x to the 2 thirds, and I know I don't really have to write this out again, and, and 5 plus x. And you know what? Honestly, I, it, I don't like the way that looks there, so I'm going to make this uh, x, x plus 5. Okay. I think that just looks, looks a little bit better when I write it like that. Um, additionally, instead of going through and <coughs> ooh, sorry, instead of going through and taking the derivative uh, of this using the product rule, I'm just going to multiply that through and make that x to the 5 thirds plus 5x to the 2 thirds. Okay? Because now I can just take the derivative of the individual pieces, and I think that'll be easier. So now let's maybe just do that. So my derivative will be 5 thirds x to the 2 thirds, okay, plus, and when I multiply that, uh, the exponent down, 10 thirds x to the negative 1 third. Okay. Now, to simplify that, I'm going to factor out the 5 thirds, okay, because I will, I will always take out the denominator. And then when I compare the numerators, I've got a 5 and a 10, so the 5 is common. And then I'll take out x to the lowest exponent, which in this case is going to be the, the 1 third. That is going to leave me with x uh, plus 2. And so there we go. Now, for me to determine the intervals of increase and decrease here, I need to know where the first derivative is either undefined or zero. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at this. I'm going to rewrite this so it's maybe a little bit clearer. So this will be 5 multiplied by x plus 2 over 3 multiplied by the cube root of x. Okay, so th this is maybe a little bit clearer. Notice that this is undefined at x is equal to 0, and it's equal to 0, just look at the numerator there, at x equals negative 2. So what we've got now is this, these two numbers on the number line here, we've got the negative 2 and we've got the 0. Now I'm just going to talk about really quickly or investigate what's going on with the, the first derivative. Okay, well, if I pick a number that's less than negative 2, okay, if I pick a number that's less than negative 2, x plus 2 will still be negative. And additionally, if x is less than negative 2, its cube root will also be negative. So the numerator and denominator both produce negative values in this interval, meaning that this is going to be positive. So in that interval, the function will be in increasing. Between negative 2 and 0, if you plug a value in there into x plus 2, any number in here, if you add 2 to it, will become a positive. But in this interval, all those numbers are, are still negative, so the cube root will be negative. So a positive divided by a negative will be negative. And what this means is that in this interval here, the function must be decreasing. If you pick a value of x greater than 0, well, the numerator is going to be positive and the cube root will also be positive. So once again, positive over positive will be positive here. So the first derivative is positive on the interval negative infinity to negative 2 union 0 out to infinity. And that implies to me that f of x increases on negative infinity to negative 2 union 0 to infinity. And notice, again, when I talk about increasing and decreasing, I'm actually including those endpoints. I don't include them here because the, the first derivative isn't positive, sorry, isn't 0 there. Uh, sorry, I, I don't include the 0. I'm looking for where the first derivative is positive. But I, I do include them when I'm talking about the intervals of increasing and decreasing. Just like the first derivative is negative on the interval, negative 2 to 0. And I know that that implies that the function, whoops, no, not the derivative, sorry, the function decreases on the closed interval, negative 2 to 0. Okay. 
So even right there, uh, I can tell that we've we've got right here. This is going to be a a local max. Whoops, can you see that? Yeah, local max, and this here is going to end up being a local min. Okay. Good. Uh, and I can determine the values of those. If if we go back to the original function, uh, you'll you'll notice that we're going to get that max. That max is going to occur at, uh, we can get the values here, negative 2. I believe it's like uh, 3 multiplied by the cube root of 4, whatever that turns out to be. The min is a little bit easier to work out. It's just going to be 0, 0. Now, if we want to know what the concavity is going to be, we're going to take the second derivative. Okay. Um, I'm going to go grab that first derivative again. Uh, and I'm going to grab that part before I simplified it or maybe I should say uh, added the two fractions together. I'm going to take it from here because I'm going to take the derivative of this because I think it'll be easier again. So my second derivative is going to be, what do I got here? It's going to be 10 ninths x to the negative 1 third uh, minus, that's going to be 5 thirds. Oh, no, sorry, I, I copied that down wrong. That should have been a 3. Sorry, my mistake. My mistake. That should be negative 10 ninths. Oh, okay, again. X to the, what is that? It's going to be negative 4 thirds. All right. So now I am going to factor out the 10 ninths. Clearly, that's common. I can see that in both. And then X to the smaller exponent will be negative 4 thirds. Okay. That is going to leave me with x, uh, well, x, actually, uh, minus 1. That's it. So I'm just going to rewrite that just in a, in a way that's a little bit more uh, maybe user-friendly. So 10 multiplied by x minus 1 over 9 uh, multiplied by, well, we'll just write it like this, the cube root of x to the fourth, which can be simplified a little bit, but at, for the time being, that's, that's not all that necessary. So now, I'm interested in where the second derivative is either zero or undefined. It's going to be undefined. Okay, it's going to be undefined at x equals zero. I think that's, that's fairly clear. And it's going to equal zero at x equals to one. So when I look at my number line there, and I plug in my two numbers here, zero and, and one, I'm looking for the intervals of positive and negative for, for my uh, denominator here and my, my numerator, but I'm going to kind of talk about them separately. First of all, notice that because I've got the denominator inside this radical, I've got it as x to the fourth, no matter what number I plug in there, this is always going to be positive or zero. Okay, and I've already identified the zero there, so that's not a big deal. But I already, I know that this is always going to be positive, and the cube root of a positive will always be positive. So it, the, the denominator is not influencing the sign of the overall function. It's the numerator that is. And so x minus 1, x minus 1 will be negative for all values less than negative, sorry, less than positive 1, and positive for all values greater than positive 1. So it's going to be negative here, negative here, positive here. That's a bit of a weird result because notice it was, it was undefined here. There's, there's something going on here. The, the function itself was defined at 0. The first derivative was defined at, at sorry, is, was undefined at 0 though. My mistake, the first derivative was undefined. And now the second derivative is undefined as well. But the concavity didn't change. We're going to talk about that. So that means right now that this result here, this is going to be concave down on the interval here where the second derivative is, is negative. <clears throat> but negative infinity up to 0, but not including 0 at this point. And I can't include it. I, and I know that I've included those endpoints before. But before when I've included them, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. No, I do want to include this. My mistake. I do want to include this. 
And the reason I want to is because it is, it is defined in that function there. Okay, so even though the, the second derivative is not defined there, when we talk about concavity, that's a little bit different, uh, a, a slightly different description there. And so the concavity will reach up to that point here. Now, this is going to be union, 0 out to 1. Okay, so concave down here, concave down here. Now, which means you might, be, you might see this uh, quite clearly here, that this is actually going to be negative infinity out to 1. And likewise, <clears throat> this is going to be concave up from 1 out to infinity. So my interval for concave down went right over that 0. But I know something strange is happening at zero. We're going to talk about that in just a, just a quick second here. Okay? And then it's going to be concave up from one on. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm going to just draw my little sketch right here. This is what this is going to look like. Oh, sorry, I should have said this. I know that the concavity changes here. It didn't change here, it changed here. So I've got a point of inflection at one comma. <coughs> I just got to go to my original function. It turns out it's going to be 6 here. So if I go to my graph, I know that it goes through 0, 0. I knew that it had a maximum at like negative 2, uh, 3, cube root 4, eh, whatever that is. And then I know that it had an inflection point right here at, at 1, 6. So up above this graph, I'm going to identify the intervals of increase and decrease. Okay, and that was going to occur, whoops, yeah, this is at negative 2, and this is at 1. So from negative infinity up to negative 2, my function is increasing. From negative 2 to, to 0, it's decreasing. And then from 0 out to infinity, it's increasing again. In terms of concavity, my concavity, I hit an interesting situation here at 0, and then at 1, but it was concave down here, concave down here, and then concave up. So now let's, let's put this all together. As I slide along from left to right here, I'm in a concave down interval that's increasing, up to a maximum right there. So it's got to look something like this. I'm still concave down, but now I'm decreasing till I get here. And I know that the slope was undefined here. The, the first derivative was undefined, meaning that the graph goes vertical. So it's got to look like this. But then I, ent I, I enter an interval where I'm increasing and concave down to this point right here. So it's, it's got to do something like that, concave down and, and increasing. So <clears throat> I'm getting this weird sort of a point right here, a really sharp point. And again, we call that a cusp when you get a, that really sharp point here where the concavity doesn't change. Now from this point on, from 1 to keep going to the right here, I'm still concave up and I'm still increasing. So the curvature looks something like this. So it comes, it's concave down but increasing. Then we hit a point of inflection and it curves up here. And notice that the only places where the first derivative was 0 or undefined were here and here. So I've got a maximum here, a minimum here. This didn't turn out to have those properties, so it didn't level out. Okay, so we don't have a maximum or a minimum right there. That's what that sort of a graph would look like.